Hey, welcome back everyone. So let's take a look at the next stage of the workshop, Application Portfolio Management. So um, oftentimes in organizations people are, are doing uh, application portfolio management and analysis of applications that goes beyond enterprise architecture. It's looking at applications from a non-architectural standpoint and how they affect the organization but rather their importance to the organization, the costs of the application, uh, whether or not you want to strategically invest in them, divest in them, maintain them, the development bandwidth and costing on, on how much applications are costing to develop and maintain, what are the business priorities versus the applications that are serving those priorities, um, what's working well based on um, um, surveys of people using the applications and having trouble or not trouble with the applications. What's unnecessary? What's redundant? What? It's non-architectural information and um, you're capturing it typically in an APM tool like some of the ones mentioned here, Focal Point, Plan View, Clarity. Sometimes you can capture it in the EA tool as well. Um, you can in this lab, we're going to bring information in from an APM tool into the architecture, certain aspects of that analysis so we can see how it affects the architecture. Sometimes you can create um, OSLC links between the enterprise architecture tool and the APM tool if it's supporting open services for lifecycle collaboration. So you're keeping information in two different tools and, and linking across. You can do that as well. This lab, again, I mentioned we're going to bring that over. Here's a bubble chart of APM analysis, ranking, applications, um, um, cost. Um, the important thing of the bubble chart is always what the size of the bubble means. and It might be cost here, rank, cost is across the bottom, so that's not it. Um, but here's some other um, uh, charts on some APM analysis on applications, their business risk, their alignment to the IT, uh, IT risk, um, whether or not they're critical or not, uh, etc. So this kind of information uh, brought into the EA tool, then you can see how that application is tied to the architecture, to the processes, to the services it's providing, and you get that bigger picture um, of how an application fits in an organization. So it may go through APM analysis and you may decide, well, this is something we want to, to retire, but then the EA analysis may say, well, maybe you don't want to retire it because it's, it's really hooked up to so much in an organization. And so that um, helps the argument for what you would want to do or not do with an application. So then comes the lab seven. Um, and um, bear with us here, hang in for these next um, set of slides. You'll do Lab 7 after these next set of slides. Where you, In Lab 7, I believe you're importing some information from an APM tool um, and um, then you're going to analyze that information. So let's take a look at analysis. So um, a lot of ways to analyze information in System Architect, the Enterprise Architecture tool. Um, and you're using analysis to answer questions. So we have some questions on the slide. Um, if a system is retired, what capabilities are affected? How many projects are underway to supply similar capabilities? Uh, if I want to field a new system, what are the systems that I currently have that are similar to it based on functions they perform? Disaster recovery. If a system is put out of service, what capabilities are affected? Based on it in this lab being in a, in a, in a location that has a high flood zone risk. Um, risk. If an operating system has changed, what capabilities could be affected? Lots of questions about the EA. And you can write reports and, and run reports to analyze information. There's a couple of visual ways to, to um, see the output of reports in System Architect. One is this cause-effect analysis explorer diagram, and you'll build one in the lab. And this essentially runs a report. Instead of pushing a report out to an HTML page or a Word document, um, you're pushing it into a diagram. So um, you see here functions and capabilities and, and activities and this is a set of, of um, in this case capabilities that may be related to certain other things. So it's a subset of the capabilities in, the, in this architecture and so the report itself produces um, in this case capabilities of a certain type and then you can run reports to see what's related to what. So the line represents what would be in a, in a spreadsheet output of what's related to what. Um, and so you can see this kind of information. 
uh, cause-effect analysis. And then, and then this enables you to cut out the middleman. In, in this case, that was, uh, what was that, um, activities, and see if X is related to Y, is related to Z, just show me X to Z. And so you could run a, just a different query that does the joins, leaves out the middleman, and you have a clear picture of um, a cause-effect analysis across an organization and different aspects. So that's the Explorer diagram. You'll build one. And then um, you can um, hide lines so that if you have a spaghetti kind of diagram, you can isolate on various things and, and, and see the chain of what's related to what. Explorer diagrams are great that way. And you can publish that to an architecture uh, website um, so that people can see this uh, daisy chain um, analysis. Uh, and then you can use um, um, heat map um, analysis as well. Um, so more questions, uh, budget constraints, how can we re re reduce costs to meet budget constraints but still provide needed capabilities, uh, unintended co effects of cost reduction, if we virtualize servers, what apps are affected, what activities are affected, what capabilities are put at risk, um, activity-based costing, lots of ways to calculate costs, um, disaster recovery analysis, all of this is part of what enterprise architecture enables you to do and analyze and, and, and result on. So let's take a look at some heat map analysis. Different view, again a report that's run that shows in this case, um, um, you can't even uh, read some of this, uh, there may be functions or capabilities, those are capabilities, and then you're running a report, activities that are part of those capabilities, and so we're putting the activity inside the box of the capability and then running another report to show uh, capabilities with activities, with system functions, with systems in this case, and putting the systems inside the box of the of the capability. So you get this kind of analysis instead of instead of those line diagrams, cause effect diagrams. You're seeing landscape diagrams, and um, then you can run analytics again, running a report, coloring things in this case based on the system cost, right? And so um, that is. Um, what you're going to do, you're going to build um, a landscape heat map analysis diagram in Lab 8. So Lab 7, you're importing APM tool uh, information from an APM tool, doing cause-effect analysis, and then you're going to create a landscape view, um, and then uh, heat map analysis on it. So Lab, lab 8 actually is something else, so C, uh, CMDB information. So go ahead, do Lab 7, uh, and then come back for um, the introduction to Lab 8.